You are listening to a summary of The Logic of Scientific Discovery, a book by Karl Popper. To understand how science works, read Karl Popper's philosophical classic, first published in German in 1935 and then in English in 1959. Though it's challenging, you'll understand why it was seminal to the philosophy of science in the 20th century. Popper's argument about the central role of falsifiability, that scientists test theories by attempting to falsify them, is essential. Popper's writing is quite lucid. However, in addressing the nature of knowledge, he assumes the reader is familiar with epistemological reasoning and a range of theorists. Get Abstract recommends Popper's groundbreaking, influential treatise to scientists, academics and anyone interested in the ground rules of philosophy, science or knowledge. The Logic of Science All science proceeds according to specific methodological rules or conventions. Such rules closely connect with other rules and practices that distinguish one field from another. Scientists make statements and then test them. They articulate hypotheses or systems of theories and then test them. 2. The logic of scientific discovery both follows and analyzes the methods of the empirical sciences. Scientific discovery is not identical with inductive logic. Inferences are inductive if they move from particular statements to universal truths. But you can't use induction alone to test theories. Some people may regard universal statements as true based on their personal experiences, but that line of thinking isn't valid in science. You can know only singular statements this way. Justification for inductive inferences requires having a principle of induction to demonstrate the truth of the theory at hand. This principle can't be purely logical. Among other criterion, you must be able to falsify it. Science isn't just a matter of coming up with ideas, it demands critically testing theories and selecting them based on test results. Once you articulate an idea, you draw conclusions through logical deduction. Then you compare these conclusions with each other and with related statements to evaluate their degree of relationship. You can test a theory four ways, 1. Consistency of internal conclusions. 2. Conformity to the nature of scientific theory. 3. Comparison with known theories or 4. The validity of its applications. When testing a theory, you can always produce a temporary positive result. Your goal is to seek negative results that disprove the theory. That is, to show its falsifiability. Falsifiability the empirical sciences include the natural and social sciences, but they don't encompass the formal sciences of math and logic. When conducting analysis in the empirical sciences, you hit the problem of demarcation. You have to identify a criterion that distinguishes empirical science from math, logic and metaphysics. Rather than claiming absolute certainty or justifying your thesis with claims about its essence, Use a criterion of either agreement or convention to distinguish your thesis and to justify it in terms of logical consequences. The notion of falsifiability is the main convention separating empirical sciences from other areas. For falsifiability to demarcate empirical science, you need singular statements that work as premises in falsifying inferences. Test your theories objectively. The scientific method identifies with the logic or epistemology of scientific discovery. It follows specific rules, which can vary according to your approach to science. For instance, other people must be able to replicate your experience. Theorists find theoretical models sufficient, but empirical scientists require more. The attributes and components of theories. The empirical sciences are systems of theories. The reasoning behind scientific knowledge is presented as a theory of theories. Scientific theories use language to make universal claims about the world. One element of these theories is causal explanation, 
which involves universal and singular statements about reality. To make a causal explanation, you apply universal laws to specific conditions. If you understand causality, you can both explain and predict events. Look for two types of universal synthetic statements, strictly universal and numerically universal. Strictly universal statements claim to be true anywhere, anytime. Numerically universal statements are true only for a specific space and time. This distinction resembles the difference between universal concepts and individual concepts. Universal concepts are general linguistic categories, like dictator or planet. Specific concepts are labels applied to one example, like Napoleon or Earth. Specific labels often refer to particular coordinates in time and space. But individually identified concepts can be part of larger groups, your dog is part of the group of dogs, in the larger category of mammals. You can't identify an individual object by its universal qualities and relationships. And you can't define universal concepts by using individual names. Claims such as all ravens are black are pure or strict universal statements, time and space don't limit them. You can negate these statements by providing a specific, existential counterexample, like a raven of a different color. Theories of natural science follow the structure of universal statement. Think of natural laws as prohibitions, which you can't use to falsify existential statements. For example, if someone asserts that white ravens exist, pointing out the existence of black ravens doesn't falsify the assertion about white ravens. The nature of empirical sciences means that theories always change. Only specific branches of science ever become systems of theories. In these fully developed systems, people in the field can identify how different aspects of the system relate to one another. The statements in a theoretical system must be falsifiable for the system to be considered part of an empirical science. You can falsify a system if you find a replicable effect that refutes the theory. If a system says certain events can't happen and they do, then that system is falsified. Perceptions and falsification Some people argue that the empirical sciences are just perceptions and don't reach the level of objective reality but, instead, lie within the sense experience of those doing the studies. This objection is accurate only to a certain degree, yes. Empirical science does depend on the sense data of those practicing it. However, Empirical science is not merely a systematic representation of the scientist's immediate experience. Scientists apply induction to sense data with the goal of creating universal statements, which they can test via deduction. Basic statements determine if a theory is falsifiable. These statements must be universal. The process of testing a theory ends with a basic statement that scientists must accept for the process to function, those statements are treated as conventions. Scientists don't accept any random claim as a basic statement, nor do they accept statements arbitrarily or through logic alone. They choose the statement that is the most fitting, just as a jury reaches the best decision it can through deliberation. Neither verdict is absolute. Some theories are more easily falsifiable than others. Scientists want theories to be easily falsifiable. Simplicity is valuable because simple theories have higher empirical content and scientists can test them more easily. The higher a statement's degree of falsifiability, the higher is its empirical content. Yet simplicity lacks a clear definition. To use simplicity as a criterion for judging theories, rating simpler theories as more valuable, scientists must define and explain simplicity, which plays an active role in inductive logic and is useful when evaluating theories. Probability Contemporary physics largely depends on the theory of probability. 
scientists still need a consistent definition of probability and also must clarify how probability and experience relate. There are two kinds of probability statements, subjective statements and numerical statements. Scientists can objectively evaluate numerical statements, which state probability in numbers, when seeking empirical knowledge. However, subjective statements express only how confident someone is about a line of reasoning, they aren't empirical knowledge. You can't falsify probability statements, because hypotheses involving probability aren't verifiable and don't rule out anything. Probability statements can't contradict one another. You can deduce existential hypotheses from probability statements. Because you can't falsify probability statements, you can use them to explain any apparent observed regularity in physics. In physics, the most important application of probability statements lies in interpreting some physical effects as mass phenomena rather than as micro events. Scientists deduce macro laws by making observations that agree with probability statements. Since scientists can't falsify probability statements, they risk slipping into speculative metaphysics. Scientists must avoid metaphysics when applying probability statements to the empirical sciences. These issues don't bother physicists, who apply a physical definition of probability. They construct experiments based on chance. They find these experiments valid because they generate results in large numbers of repetitions, thus overcoming methodological objections to probability. The ability to reproduce physical results aligns with the principle of scientific objectivity. Even though probability statements lack empirical significance and are metaphysical, scientists use them as falsifiable statements. To do so, scientists must demand probability statements that align with basic statements that meet a clearly stated standard. The scientist's goal is to make all statements reproducible and testable. Scientists' predictions are valid only if they are based on laws and initial conditions. If you don't know the laws governing something or its initial conditions, you can't make scientific predictions. Theories Testing and corroboration. Some thinkers escape the question of whether theories are true or false by classifying theories as being more or less probable. This misguided attempt comes from confusing psychological questions with logical ones. Scientists should assess how others have tested a theory and if its fitness is proven. They must remember that a theory can't be verified, but it can be corroborated. That is, it can pass a series of tests that confront it with accepted basic statements. You can verify specific predictions made based on a theory, but you can't verify the theory itself. Some new experiment could come along to falsify a theory. When that happens, you don't have to discard older theories. Under the new theory, the predictions will still apply everywhere they formerly applied. That scientists can't verify theories is methodologically important. Review the common idea that natural processes don't change. And then imagine that human experience undergoes a major shift. Like the sun not rising one morning. Science would have to explain. In terms of natural law. Both this change and the earlier experience of the sun rising daily. To do so. Scientists would have to adjust the idea that natural processes don't change and reshape it into a claim about natural laws governing these processes. Scientists would need to postulate that such laws don't change and don't have exceptions. This would give you statements you could falsify, thus making it possible to test them. A shift from metaphysics to empirical science. Degree of falsifiability when discussing how fully corroborated a theory is, scientists take its degree of falsifiability into account. If scientists have tested a theory often and rigorously, they consider it highly corroborated. This lets them avoid using the problematic terms true and false when discussing a theory. 
rather than saying a theory is true. They can and should discuss whether they can derive specific predictions from specific conditions. Rather than stating that a theory is false, they should indicate a specific set of basic statements that contradict it. Scientists aren't forbidden to use the terms true and false, but they must recognize these statements as non-empirical logical concepts. Claims about truth are timeless. Claims about corroboration aren't. Saying a statement was true yesterday, but it is false today makes sense only if you're saying you were wrong yesterday. However, saying you considered a theory corroborated yesterday, but don't find it corroborated today, due to new testing or new data, is always appropriate. Physics The field of physics has evolved from less universally applicable theories to more universally applicable theories. Scientists let newer theories at a higher level of universality replace older, well-corroborated theories only after they determine that the newer theory is better testable and can contain the older theory. This process is quasi-inductive. Scientists propose theories and test them deductively. They treat more broadly universal theories the same way. But they can't jump straight to the most universal theories without testing the less universal theories. They need these initial results to test more broadly applicable theories. Otherwise, they slide into creating untestable metaphysical systems. There is no state of finality. Science can never create certainty or achieve a state of finality. It can never claim to have attained truth or even a substitute for it, such as probability. Scientists might guess at answers because they don't know them, but they must subject their guesses to systematic testing. Scientists don't propose ideas and defend them. They do their best to destroy their ideas. Scientists seek deeper, more universal problems and aim to test them ever more rigorously.